2.4, writing equations of lines is what we are on right now, writing the actual equations of lines. Slope intercept form we talked about in the last section, that's y equals mx plus b, where m stands for the slope uh, and uh, b stands for the y intercept. We have point slope form, which it's my duty as a math teacher to show it to you, but I very rarely use it because I don't see the importance of it. Um, as you can see, it's just a sense of rewriting the slope with some missing um, x values um, or y values. So we have y2 and y1, we have x2 and y1, and we have m for the slope as well. So if I give you a line here, and we want to figure out what it is, is it 4x minus 2? So just to uh, double check to see if it is, you look at it and you see where it crosses and it's crossing here at negative 2 and you try to find another point so it looks like it's crossing at negative 2 it goes up 1, 2, 3, 4 and over 1 which is the uh, slope of the line it goes up 4 and right 1 so 4 over 1 which is 4 and negative 2 which is the y-intercept with this line right here it looks like it's going through 2 which means the y-intercept will be a positive 2 at the end and it looks like it goes up 1 and write 2, which means the slope will be a fraction of 1 half. So it's simply just about finding two points on the line and seeing what they are and going from there to set up your uh, equation in y-intercept form. <laughs> so example 2, write an equation of a line that passes through the point 2, 3 and has a slope of negative 1 half. So what that means is we have the form y equals mx plus b, right? I am told that the slope is negative one half, so I can plug that in there for m. I'm also told a point. This point is two three. That point two three is x and y. That's what it's telling me. That's uh, the two is x and three is y. So I can plug those in. This is what I did there. I took that two. I plugged it in for x. I took that three. I plugged it in for y. So when I did that and plugged it in, two times negative one half is like me saying 2 over 1 times negative 1 over 2. So when I multiply straight across, the 2's cancel out, and I'm left with a negative 1. So to solve for b, because I'm trying to figure out what the y-intercept is, to solve for b, I can add 1 to both sides, and I end up with b equals 4. So I plug a 4 back in here, because I know that y equals negative 1 half x plus some number b, so I take that 4 and I plug it in there, and there is the equation of the line. Keep the change, you filthy animal. So I write an equation of a line that passes through the point 3, 2, and, and is perpendicular and parallel to y equals negative 3x plus 2. So I write an equation of a line that passes through that point and is perpendicular and parallel to it. So once again, I use the form y equals um, mx plus b, but here's what I know. I need it to be parallel to this, right? Parallel to this line means they have the same slope. So what that means is I can rewrite this as y equals mx plus b, but instead of putting an m in there, I'm putting the negative 3 because it has the same exact slope. That's what parallel means. So then I use this point of 3, 2, and I plug uh, 3 in for x and 2 in for y. So I plug them in, I get negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. And to get b all by itself, all I have to do is add 9 to both sides because negative 9, the opposite of a negative, is positive. So I add 9 to both sides, so I get b equals 11. So basically I can plug an 11 in there, and there is um, y equals negative uh, 3x plus 11. That's your parallel line. So that line is parallel to this, and it goes through that point. Perpendicular has the, the slopes are opposite reciprocals. So if this is the slope, the opposite of this would be a positive 3, and the reciprocal would be a 1 third. So now I'm looking at a line that has y equals 1 third x plus b. I'm still taking the same point and plugging it in. I'm still taking 3 over 2 and plugging it in. So there's the 3, there's the 2. I can rewrite that as 3 over 1, and the 3's cancel out, so all I'll have left is a 1. So to get b all alone, since a positive 1, I subtract 1 on both sides, and I get b equals 1 as my answer. So I take that 1, and I plug it in for b. So your final answer is y equals 1 third x plus 1. Hasta la vista, baby.
Example 4. Write an equation of a line that passes through those two points. So we need to use the slope. So uh, when we're doing this, first find the slope, which is what we did in 2.2. Uh, so it's 4 minus negative 1 over negative 3 minus negative 2. Well, minus a negative is the same as plus a positive, plus a positive. So 4 plus 1 is 5. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And 5 divided by negative 1 is negative 5. So I now know the slope. The slope is negative 5. So to find out what B is, I can take any one of those two points I want. It doesn't matter. Each one will give me the same answer. So I can take any of those two points I want. So I'm going to pick the point negative 2, uh, negative 1. Negative 2 is x, so I plug that in for x. Negative 1 is y, so I plug that in for y. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. So to solve for b, since it's a positive 10, I can subtract 10 on both sides. So I get negative 11 for b. So I basically plug a negative 11 in there, and I'll end up with negative 5x minus 11 as my answer. Good morning, star shine. The Earth says hello. When I come back, we'll talk about direct variation and finish up in this section.